Is it magic, myth, or real medicine? Today, we're diving into the world of ear candling. Now, you've probably heard about it, seen it, or maybe you've even tried it, but the question remains, does ear candling work? Stick around and we'll unravel this mystery with a little experiment that might just surprise you. So let's start with the basics. Ear candling is an alternative practice that involves placing a hollow ear candle into the ear canal and then setting it on fire. It's been around for centuries with roots in ancient practices across various cultures. Now, despite a lack of scientific backing, ear candling has surged in popularity. It's touted for not just removing earwax, but also relieving sinus infections, curing colds, and even improving your state of mind. Its holistic appeal and the allure of a natural remedy make it a go-to choice for lots of people out there. Let's delve deeper into the supposed mechanism of ear candling. Now, the process is fascinating, at least in theory. The idea is that when the candle is inserted into the ear canal and it's lit, it creates heat. Now, that heat is believed to soften the earwax. But here comes the crucial part, the vacuum hypothesis. Proponents of ear candling argue that burning candles creates a low pressure vacuum. Imagine a gentle pull, a subtle suction force, theoretically drawing out earwax and debris from the ear canal. But there's more to this theory. Some advocates suggest that the heat not only helps in softening the wax, but also stimulates certain points in the ear, supposedly providing therapeutic benefits. Interestingly, the candle's composition is also a part of this theory. Many ear candles are made from beeswax and infused with herbs or essential oils, like the lemongrass one we use in our little experiment coming up. This is thought to add to the healing properties, with each ingredient playing a role in soothing or treating ear-related ailments. However, the big question remains. Is there any scientific basis to these claims? Does the burning candle indeed create enough vacuum to affect the wax? And what about the safety concerns associated with a lit candle so close to the ear? These are questions we sought to answer with our experiment, testing out the vacuum hypothesis and seeing what is in the ear candle after you burn it without putting it in an ear canal. Before we get to that though, if you're enjoying our content and find it helpful, we'd really appreciate it if you could click like and subscribe to our channel. This makes a huge difference to us and the support means we can continue providing even more videos like this one. So I went to a well-known high street supplier of holistic health goods in the UK and I bought some lemongrass flavoured ear candles. I put some plastic around the top of a bottle, filled it with water, sellotaped on a bit of plastic to make a bit of a barrier, made it nice and tight. Now, I had to make my own collection plate. The last time I did something like this for TikTok, uh, the candles came with a plate. These candles, not only were they more expensive, but they didn't come with a plate, which was disappointing. Not to worry though, so we put the ear candle through the plate and rested the top of the candle just on the surface of the water. Then we marked the side with a sharpie to see if the supposed vacuum made any difference. Then we lit the candle and watch it burn. Now in theory, if the candle was going to work as they say, it would have sucked up some of that water. We keep an eye on it and the water wasn't moving at all. Literally nothing was happening. It did smell really good though. We let it all burn down, then when we got to the end, we had another check of the water. No movement at all. The plate I've made was completely useless. I've now got ash all over my office. Now it was time to see if there was anything in the ear candle itself. I'd almost managed to get the candle out when I managed to drop it in the water, rendering the whole of this little bit completely pointless. But we still had a look inside the candle anyway once I've managed to fish it out. And as you can see, there is some waxy substance in there. It's obviously made to look a bit earwaxy. Anyway, being the scientist I am, I had to do a rerun without trying to drop anything in the water. So we did it again, burning the candle down once more after marking a new bottle of water. It burnt really nicely. Once again, absolutely zero difference to the water level itself. When it came out, this time I was uh, well prepared using a pair of kitchen scissors. So let's see and find out what was in this one. Now, it's actually a little bit more interesting this time. As you can see, there's definitely an oily, waxy substance in there. If you didn't know what you're looking at, you definitely assume that that was earwax related for sure. So. This is the sort of remnants you'll find in the ear candles. The water didn't move either time, and anything that looks like earwax in these things, it's already going to be there. 
Here's where it gets serious. If ear candling was to create the necessary vacuum to pull wax, the pressure needed would almost certainly be enough to perforate your eardrum. It's just not possible. We use actual suction machines, and even with that suction, it isn't as simple as just sticking it in the ear canal and out pops the earwax. Earwax can be pretty stubborn. Plus, there's always the risk of burns from the flame or dripping wax. I'd definitely be worried about this after seeing it in the end. Your, your ear canal is a really delicate environment. The skin is very, very thin, so you need to be really careful. Hot wax is definitely something I'd be avoiding. The overall evidence suggests that ear candling is ineffective and potentially quite hazardous. So given the risks and inefficiency of ear candling, what are the safer alternatives? Microsuction and irrigation are two clinically recommended methods. Microsuction uses gentle suction to remove earwax, whilst irrigation involves washing out the ear canal with water. Over-the-counter ear drops like sodium bicarbonate drops are another safe option for softening earwax before removal. Sometimes actually that's all you need to do to help earwax come out naturally. These methods are not only safer, but they have proven effectiveness. Our little experiment and the research around ear candling gives a clear verdict. Ear candling is more myth than medicine. Whilst the allure of simple natural remedy is understandable, it's crucial to prioritise safety and effectiveness. As I always say to my clients, you only get one pair of ears, so for ear health, it's best to stick to clinically approved methods. Remember, when it comes to your health, always choose wisely and stay informed. Thanks very much for watching this video. See you again next time.